And sadly, we begin with breaking news of the most difficult kind. In the last few minutes, we have learned that Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee has died. Last month, she announced she had been battling pancreatic cancer. Her family releasing a statement tonight. It reads in part, quote, her legislative victories impacted millions from establishing the Juneteenth federal holiday to reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act. However, she impacted us most as our beloved wife, sister, mother, and BB, grandmother. She will be dearly missed, but her legacy will continue to inspire all who believe in freedom, justice, and democracy. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee was 74 years old. The Congresswoman was born January 12, 1950 in Queens, New York. She was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1995. She served in the Houston City Council from 1989 to 1994 and then ran for Houston mayor in 2023. Truly a loss for our Houston community tonight, the greater community and the nation. And we're getting response and reaction tonight from people in the community, and that includes her fellow politicians and close friends. Congressman Al Green joins us on the phone right now. Congressman Green, our deepest condolences tonight on this very difficult news for the community. Well, thank you. And my deepest condolences uh, to her immediate family, um, as well as her extended family. And I say her extended family because there are many people who will find great sorrow in hearing this news. She meant a lot to people who were living in the sweets of life and to the streets of life. People up and down all walks of life knew her and had great respect for her. And she was about the business of looking out for people, regardless as to who they were. If there was an injustice, she wanted to correct it. And she set forth to do this in her entire life as I've known her. This has been what she's been about. And she and I have served Congress together for nearly 20 years, and every day was a hard work day for her. She never wasted one minute of time. She was always there. She has been likened unto a force of nature. Uh, people saw her as someone to be reckoned with and someone to work with. I'm so sorry for the law. We will miss her immensely, but I do believe that her work and her her just work ethic is something that we will see in others. I believe that there are those who will recognize what it takes to be a good public servant, and they will say, I want to be like Sheila Jackson Lee. Congressman, I once asked her husband how he keeps up with her because she was seemingly everywhere all the time. He simply said, I don't. Your thoughts about her pace of work? Well, she was everywhere all the time. If, <laughs> pardon me for having just a brief moment to, uh, you know, just to think about it with a smile, because I can recall times when I literally have seen her on television in a foreign country and just left her at a press conference. It was amazing how she left an impact wherever she uh, happened to travel to, and uh, she she just had a work ethic that. It's very difficult to match. Uh, I will tell you, we all were amazed at some of the things that she would do and the hours that she would keep. But it was just because she was devoted and loved the people that she served. She was a public servant that we will always point to and say, this is someone we should emulate. Uh, she, was, she was just one of a kind. I'm proud to have known her. And uh, the truth is, uh, we work together, and my hope is that we made each other better public servants. I know that she did make me a better public servant. Congressman Green, I know one of her last public appearances was her annual celebration of Memorial Day weekend, and we could tell then that her health was declining, but still she was there, she spoke. It was so important for her to be there. I think it speaks to her character and the woman that she was. Well, I'm confident that the physicians had great difficulty uh, keeping her in place. Um, she came to work when it was obvious that her health was declining, but um, she never she never said 
this is a bad day. She never, she never gave an indication that this is uh, some place that I should not be. I think she felt that her place was wherever there was an injustice or a place to, where she could correct an injustice. So she came to work in spite of all of it. And through it all, through it all, she stood for justice for all. I believe to her last breath, she was still uh, on, on, a, on a mission to bring justice to an unjust world to a certain extent. Con Congresswoman, just real quick, one final question. Can you tell me the last time you spoke to Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee? The last time was when we were in Congress. Um, we were in the cloakroom, and um, without getting into any of the great details, she asked me about um, something that was taking place and wanted to know my opinion. Uh, we often shared opinions about things that we were doing, and I gave her my opinion, and she shared hers, and um, I left her with a smile. Uh, she, uh, she went on that evening to cast her vote. We were voting at the time. She went on to cast her vote. And uh, when she departed, that was the last time that I saw her. And I, that was, I believe, the last time that she was in Congress. Congresswoman Al Green, thank you for your thoughts and reflections on Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee tonight. It is thank you. an unbelievable legacy that she leaves behind and will be celebrated in the coming days. The Congresswoman announced she had cancer just last month. Her near 40 years of service to Houston and the state of Texas will never be forgotten. Katira Winfrey is live outside her Houston district office. And Katira, she will absolutely be missed by so many, right? Absolutely, Trace, and this is a somber morning right until the very end. She was working for Houstonians, just reading through the statements and comments on her death. You can see the impact she's made not only in her District 18, but across the state and across the country. Now, commitment, commitment is the word that comes up quite often. Despite announcing she had cancer just last month, she was still working. She began her work in Houston as a municipal judge and city council member. And in the early 90s, she won a seat in Congress. She championed many issues, including legislation on social justice. Now, in a statement, former Mayor Turner said, I am deeply saddened by the death of my dear friend and Congress and colleague, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. From City Hall to the halls of Congress, Sheila Jackson Lee has served her constituents well and her uncanny ability to be everywhere, working every day for those who needed a champion made her truly exceptional. Now, last night, we also spoke to Congressman Al Green by phone about this loss. She was about the business of looking out for people, regardless as to who they were. If there was an injustice, she wanted to correct it, and she set forth to do this in her entire life since I've known her. This has been what she's been about, and she and I have served Congress together for nearly 20 years, and every day was a hard work day for her. She never wasted one minute of time. She was always there. She has been likened unto a force of nature. And like into a force of nature, Mayor John Whitmire also issued a statement calling Congresswoman Jackson Lee a dedicated public servant. Now, right now, we are working to find out any details about any upcoming events that will honor her life, and we will bring them to you once we get them. For now, reporting live in Houston, Katira Winfrey, KHOU 11 News. Yeah, you can't say it enough. She will absolutely be missed. Right now, the city of Houston and entire state of Texas are mourning the loss of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Last night, shortly before 10, her family announcing her death. It comes just over a month after she revealed she was battling pancreatic cancer. Tonight, local leaders who knew her well are telling our Katira Winfrey the Congresswoman set the gold standard for public service. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee had a voice and presence that was undeniable. As tiny as she was, was as big as her commitment and her voice and her power, right, and her connections. She began that legacy of service in the 80s as a municipal judge, then as a member of city council, and in the early 90s, won her seat in Congress. I'm going to miss my friend uh, and my sister. 
a position she'd hold for nearly 30 years, fighting every step along the way, never accepting no as a final answer. If you wanted a fighter, Sheila Jackson Lee. If you needed something, Sheila Jackson Lee. And she dealt with presidents and kings and queens and prime ministers, but her passion, her passion for people that live in these neighborhoods. Former Mayor Sylvester Turner says that's what she lived for, it's what she fought for, and that's what she sacrificed for. He's watched it all over a 40-year friendship. When I had a chance to speak to her, uh, to talk to her and visit with her in the last week, uh, that's what I said to her. You have left it all on the field. And your district, this state, this country is a better place. Summing up decades of work is impossible, but her commitment to social justice stood strong. When there was something uh, where there was a need, she tried to meet that need. Where there was an injustice, she tried to correct the injustice. In the minutes and hours since her family announced her passing from pancreatic cancer, we've seen a steady stream of condolences. She didn't think like a microscope. She thought just big. She always wanted the, the biggest impact. How can I help the most people? Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, a woman who expected the extraordinary. I will mourn her passing, but I will celebrate her life. Reporting in Houston, Katira Winfrey, KHOU 11 News. Troy Kless joins us live with the difference she's made in other people's lives. Troy. Well, Marcelino, today we spoke to people who remember Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee actually losing one of her first races in politics before becoming a fixture in Congress, while others are going to remember her for being a grandmother, a close friend, and also a woman of faith. There's many ways to describe Sheila Jackson Lee. She was a woman of faith, and she definitely didn't m mind getting her hands dirty. I think of genuineness. Um, I think that no matter who you were, she was for you. For others, they think of the first time meeting her. Sonceria Messiah Giles met the Congresswoman in her mother's kitchen. It was more girl talk and advice about how to navigate the political arena and some of the key players. And she was very, at the end of her career, she was, she was one of the kingmakers. Sonny says her friend touched many people's lives. Whether it was for criminal justice or for women or for children, but she was there for the community. You could never say Sheila didn't show up because Sheila was going to show up for you. She showed up for this man who is a pastor in Pearland. I've been blessed to attend some of the things that she's done in the community, um, such as at um, TSU, there's been brunches for pastors. At TSU, Dr. James Douglas recalls Sheila Jackson Lee fighting for communities of color, including two of Houston's HBCUs. Texas Southern in, in Prairie View got about $25 million in addition to funding from the state legislature. Uh, at the time that we started that effort with the Department of Education, I was president and Sheila and I worked together. Whether you knew her, because my mom died of cancer, or knew someone like her, the loss is heavy for Houston. And she has definitely been an icon and a pioneer um, for this community. And Sheila Jackson Lee again worked at all levels of government from again being a municipal judge to a longtime congresswoman. And Dr. Douglas, who you just heard from, said that he agrees that the fighting spirit, experience, and representation will be missed. Congresswoman's name has been tied to Texas's 18th district for nearly 30 years now. But after her death, the district will have a new person representing them in Washington. So here's what's next in that process. First, Governor Abbott will need to call a special election to fill the remainder of Jackson Lee's current term. That's going to be between now and January. Up next, the Harris County Democratic Party's executive committee will have to nominate someone to take Jackson Lee's place for the general election. Texas law says this has to happen by 5 p.m. on August 26th. And finally, once that nominee is selected, that person will face off against the Republican candidate Lana Santonze in November. 
I spoke with KHOU political analyst Brandon Roddinghouse about why this is a big moment for Harris County Democrats. Generally speaking, there's been a pretty big appetite in these kinds of races because these seats don't open up very much and it's hard to unseat an incumbent. So this is really a moment for the Democrats to be very careful about who they pick and for candidates to really put their best foot forward. And online right now, tributes to the late Congresswoman have been pouring in from across the state and the country. We have those and a lot more on Sheila Jackson Lee's life on KHOU.com. There are really two issues at stake. The first issue is that they have to replace Sheila Jackson Lee on the ballot. That's done by a vote of the local committee where Democrats will decide who the best person they think is to replace her. If that doesn't work or they can't find agreement, then the state party's executive committee will make a decision. That has to be done by the end of August. The second issue they have to worry about is a special election to fill out the rest of her term. She still has a few more months left until the new Congress is sworn in in January. So someone has to fill that seat. This is by the governor's decree. He has to decide when the vacancy is official and then put in effect the special election and the dates. So uh, Governor Abbott will set the election. Does Governor Abbott play any role in uh and who runs or anything like that? Or who, who makes the decision as to who will run in that special election, at least on the Democratic side? Yeah, anybody can run in that election. These are people who are probably going to be folks who have run before. They're probably going to be local political officials, some of who have waited out Sheila Jackson Lee's term in office. But generally speaking, these are going to be people who want to see themselves in that role. And uh, is it safe to assume that whoever runs in the special election will likely want to may, may be the person that you know, is on the ballot in November as well. Ooh, yeah, that make sense. it does. I think we're talking about the same universe of people, the people who the Democrats are likely considering to be the replacement on the ballot are also people who are going to consider running for that seat in the special election. It could be the same person. It could be the same handful of people. But generally speaking, there's been a pretty big appetite in these kinds of races because these seats don't open up very much and it's hard to unseat an incumbent. So this is really a moment for the Democrats to be very careful about who they pick and for candidates to really put their best foot forward. I think we'll see a lot of names thrown about. I think obviously this is one of those seats that doesn't come up very often and is a seat that once you get in there, it's really hard to get an incumbent out. So this is a lifetime appointment in some general way. So we're definitely going to see politics play a big role in it. And uh, we saw, I mean, this was this last election was or primary was the first time Sheila Jackson Lee had a pretty le legitimate primary opponent, um, although it, it ended up not being very, very close at all. Um, but she's usually not seriously challenged. This this year she was uh, by Amanda Edwards. Is that a name you'll be watching closely or that might go to the top of the list in, in terms of who you're looking out for? Yeah, I think Amanda Edwards is probably the odds on favorite here. She put together a pretty spirited challenge of Sheila Jackson without being disrespectful to the late Congresswoman's uh, time in office. She's raised a lot of money. She's got a big profile. She's probably going to be the odds on favorite, but there are going to be a lot of names that are going to be thrown about because this is a seat that does not open up very much. And it's a seat that's really hard to lose. So whoever gets it is going to hold on to it for a very long time. I was going to say, this is not a seat that... Uh... Republicans or the GOP has any chance in, in in winning at all, correct? No. No, every two years, there's always a discussion about how Republicans are going to try to take this seat. But realistically, given the demographics in it and the way that the political trends generally go, it's very unlikely this will ever be a Republican seat. This morning, the office of late Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee released a brand new statement in the days following her death. The statement started by thanking those who gave their support to the Congresswoman during her battle with cancer. It went on to say, in part, our offices will continue to work with leadership offices on the Hill on the priorities she set, which include the establishment of the Emancipation National Historic Trail, and to work on establishing a Juneteenth Commission to conduct a root cause analysis of the effects of slavery on U.S. society from its beginnings through today. Now there's an open seat in Congress for the 18th Congressional District. And that means Governor Greg Abbott and Harris County's Democratic Party will have to start the process of filling that seat.
First, Governor Abbott will need to call a special election for a representative to fill the remainder of Jackson Lee's current term. That special election will happen sometime between now and January. The Harris County Democratic Party's executive committee will have to nominate someone to replace Jackson Lee for the general election. Texas law says this must happen by 5 p.m. on August 26th. And once that nominee is selected, that person will face the Republican candidate, Lana Santanzi, in November. We have tributes to the late Congresswoman and a lot more on Sheila Jackson Lee's life on our website, KHOU.com.